Boom. Hey, hey, what's up, everybody? It's your boy, Dave Noodles. We are on the Type 88 show where we interview people about people turning their dreams into reality. And when it comes to someone who turns their dreams to reality, this guy's no stranger to the game. We got my guy here, John Siri, in the building. What's up, man? Davey Noodles. What's up, brother? How's everything? Doing good, man. Good to have you here. Before we, quite uh, a journey. Before we get too deep, I have three things. Number one, am I allowed to curse? Because I have a very colorful vernacular, and I do not want to add to the uh, editorial process. Yeah, yeah. So uh, we, we have a mix of fans and people around the globe. So, you know, do what you can. But it's the... We don't edit the things, so we try to keep it as from the heart as possible. So everyone, wow. you know, we all we all have our moments, so it's cool. All right, I'm I'm gonna attempt to keep it as clean as possible. Uh, <laughs> two, uh, have you no ever had anyone light a cigarette live on camera? Is that okay? That's cool with me. Yeah, yeah. As long as we're not we're we're not recording in my uh, <laughs> pop's uh, kitchen, so it's all good. So. Uh... <laughs> and the 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 third thing, real quick, I'm sure you've told the stereotype story countless times on whatever form of media that there is but a couple of i need to say as a fellow creator and artist from staten island that i've never seen anyone cultivate or give a platform to other artists the way that you have i mean i know artists personally that you have you know put on and given them you know so much airtime and and hype and you don't get enough credit for it bro you really uh... don't <laughs> so on behalf of Stan Island's artists, I oh, thank you man. with everything I have. Bro, I, I really appreciate it. Uh, it's when I, I remember, I always try to remember the moment when I was uh, just starting. And I when I put on, you know, when I shout out anyone or interview anyone, it's not they're just starting. I just I try to always remember that moment where I was trying to get on a show or I was trying to get somewhere and. I remember how difficult that was. And um, for me, I just, oh, I, I kind of wanted to show love as much as possible. And I'm so grateful that the brand has given me that chance and the show make a park radio. And so, you know, it, it's just been great. I've been grateful to just open and be an open door vibe. And, you know, just, we could talk about things and shine light on people following their dreams. So well, thank you, man. I don't know if anyone on Staten Island has done it as big as you. I really don't. I mean, uh, you have done it so selflessly. It's it's incredible. It's been incredible to see, especially with, you know, don't don't stop dreaming and the thoroughbred. Like everything you've touched has just been so heartfelt, and you could tell that. I really, You're really yeah. that guy. <laughs> I really appreciate it, bro. It's it's really my heart goes into everything we do, and anytime we do a collab, it, it really we try to make it something that we look back on and we're like, yo, remember that, you know, that that's what I'm all about, you know, creating that moment now. So when we look back, I know we're going to look back at music and stuff like that. I want to kind of look back on stuff I've done and be proud of it. And um, we, there were so many opportunities to do kind of dirtier style merch, but that was never me, you know, like with the half naked girls or drug stuff. And I'm not against that. And, you know, people do what they do, but, for me, it was always I wanted to make sure that I could share it with my kid or I could share it with my grandma and but keep that street appeal that my brother would like it. If I could nail that. I'm, right. I'm, you I'm happy. So you have to you have to write your truth. You know, you know, whatever it is that you're you have to be honest. You have to be sincere with yourself. There has to be a self-awareness and you have to put what you know, it's something that you would like yourself. You know what I mean? And if you would look at something and say. I love something that's going to hit my grandma, this little kid or my brother, then that's, that's who you are. That's what it's got to be. Yeah. Yeah. So I, bro, I appreciate all that, man. And thank you for so, rocking with us for, we, we've known each other for quite a while. I was looking back at some of our emails, crazy, like six, seven years. I remember just early on meeting at different mm-hmm. events and uh, connecting. So. Yeah. I, I, rem- cool. I remember even before that, my first stereotype moment was at untouchable cuts in Dungan Hills, seeing your merch in the, uh, in the in the storefront windows man i was just like wow one of the most genius brilliant logos i've ever seen in my entire life <laughs> wow i almost forgot that bro when paul mars was working there yep and uh, back in the day shout man shout out to jimmy and uh nick mm-hmm. that whole crew they uh Loose. a 
bunch of incredible characters over there too, man. The, the amount of work they've done with kids and giving back to the community every year. And they, uh, they're they definitely a, a staple of Staten Island at this point and they deserve it. They work yeah, hard. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm grateful to know them dudes and they, they definitely put on and I'm grateful that we've, we've uh, crossed paths several times, fundraiser stuff or Christmas stuff. And, and uh, yeah, shout out to the whole Untouchable crew. Best. Now, how do you feel about Staten Island's art scene in general? Because I had, personally, when I was really painting, I had stayed away from the Staten Island art scene for the most part because I had found my success early on outside of New York. Like, even though staying true to New York and that being so much of who I am, I found it outside. But the few times that I had gone to events and stuff like that, I felt like Staten Island, Staten Island has a bad rap for being this bubble, you know, and it's kind of isolated. And I felt a little bit like Staten Island art community mimicked that, where I thought it was going to be different. You know, I thought it was going to be like the fray, the, the people who weren't that, but I thought it was like its own little bubble within the bubble. Did you get that vibe at all at some point? So I, so for me, bro, like it, it's interesting because there was like a, it kind of like the art shows kind of caught this uh, momentum. It became a thing. Um, and I remember, I don't know, I don't, for me, I tried to always be like, yo, you're having me there. It's always positive, you know, and I would always just, I'm very grateful. So many people have had us at events to the point where I was literally, I didn't need to get a job because I was doing so many pop-up shops, but I, I don't know. Some, you know, it may have been a trendy thing and maybe they didn't, that whoever was doing it, maybe they didn't connect it in a way that maybe fell wholehearted maybe it was just like a maj posh like let's just throw 50 people in a room they're going to turn that into 400 people and the bar is fed you know and right and that's business um and you know i i know you know you're into boxing and and i know that's big for business just bringing lots of people in the room to to see something that's hyped up and um, right. as, as many eyes you can get on whatever it is that's uh it's the key to really any type of success. Anytime you're venturing off the path. Yeah. But that, I think my exposure was probably just a you know, crappy situation. And I probably came into an event at the wrong time when it was kind of like that hype beast a little bit. And, yeah. It but, definitely uh, caught a, it definitely caught a trend. Um, Cause I remember there was a gap in this, in this, the scene and um, you know, there were events that my, my crew projectivity and a lot of friends of mine, you know, we, we did it because we felt there was like a void or whatever. And, mm -hmm. um, and some of them went really well. Some were okay um, in terms of crowd, but like we always tried to curate it in a way that made sense. Um, and I know when it, it got a little trendy and a lot of people were just doing them and I think maybe they didn't know who they were having. And then you may get that vibe, especially when it's mixed with maybe a bar vibe. Right. Where so it's, so it's the wrong the wrong there's a bunch of people there and they don't even know about the artist which is cool too because it cross pollinates and people see that so it's it's hit or miss you know i i think i appreciate anyone that have done those things to kind of they've supported me and and different artists their intentions i don't know but um that you may have ran into a vibe where it was maybe just a trendy maybe it was a trendy vibe where it wasn't curated in the right way and it may have felt inauthentic Right, like you said, it wasn't really wholehearted. Yeah, yeah. So, and I've I've been to some of those too, and I've I crushed it where there were just mad people there just because it was a bar and they stumbled upon my stuff. So I never. Some of them were different vibes, but probably the ones with maybe the more wholehearted vibe probably didn't make as much money too. Uh, so like Fair. as a business, right? Man, it's, it's almost like uh, cannibalizing. You know, it's like you're you're placating exactly to your audience. Yeah, yeah. So. But for me, bro, I'm I'm really grateful to to have seen the scene blossom quite a bit. Um, I remember coming up and going to like a trunk face show. This was like 14 years ago. Insane. And um, shout out to Scott James. I remember going to one of his shows at um, it was before it was Amendment 18. I think it was just called Dock Street. Wow. And I remember going to that, bro. And I just loved the grassroots effect. And I was like, yo, I got to throw a show. I got to, I got to do an event. And um, I was inspired by that event. And I just, cause any event or concert I went to was like, 
an M&M or a 50 cent or something really big. And right. that was like the first like curated show with just hip hop. No one I knew besides Scott at the moment. And um, that was like 14 years ago. And, right. and, and I remember there was n- not too many shows. Robots Will Kill was thriving on the internet and doing some shows and stuff but there weren't it was kind of crickets in terms of just doing an event or going to an event with art made by people locally yeah Staten like, island did, did have a big void but I mean, the the amount of talent on Staten island is completely absurd like i i always said it every artist i was ever at a show with blew me out of the water in ways that i couldn't even articulate i mean their work would just light years beyond where i was and the only yeah. reason i had certain successes potentially over certain people was just because of networking that's that's literally all it was like i was completely undeserving as far as talent goes completely undeserving but you know i just got in front of the right eyes and that was really it yeah yeah man and um there's it's it's amazing i'm so happy you know it i know a lot of people leaving the borough to go to jersey or florida or cali or whatever and i'm like it's hard for me to be to see myself somewhere else i just i really love it here but um and i'm really grateful to just see you know there's so many dope organizations now that really go hard stand out in arts projectivity you know this sun dog there's so many and there's so many opportunities now and it's i think it's catching on and people are seeing like yo look he's out there doing it i could do it and then it's just like it's been like a snowball effect and i i'm seeing so many people now being like oh i'm done with my job i'm just doing art now i'm doing murals and that's the goal, man. That's huge. And, and I think seeing people, I think the, the, the real inspiration is seeing, like you said, where it's, oh, they're doing it and I could do it too. Like there shouldn't be a, a competitive space. It should be uplifting. There's plenty of room for all of us, you know, like, and I want to, I want to hype you so that you could eat more. And I want to hype this guy and the next guy. It's, it, it shouldn't be a, uh, shouldn't be competitive in that sense. I mean, there should always be a little bit of a, hey, come on, I see what you're doing. But at the same time, there's plenty of room for all of us. You know, there's no reason not to. I've been say, yeah, I've been saying that, man. I'm like, you know, there's there's a big enough pie for us all to be fed if oh, we're yeah. willing to go hard and we're and um and I see so many people I see so many people sharing. You know, they do an event, they they get a grant, they get they hire someone to do this. So it's nice to see and I, I think it's a good example for a future generation. Um you know, the younger cats that are maybe in their early 20s or just getting into rap or just starting painting. And, you know, we've had musicians where artists, it was their very first show and their art right. was like 10 feet away from like Q Molly, who's like right. painted murals for 50 cent and like Chris Robots. And some of these artists are like, yo, this changed my life. Like I, I never been to an art show and then to be at something with like 60 people. Is, right. is, is amazing and they're like i wanted to do it more when i when i came to this after this event and, um, and it's you know rising tides lift all boats man it's you know, if you're standing next to somebody if you're just starting out and you're standing next to somebody that's at that level i mean it, it makes you better it makes you want to get better it, it, it's so much it's a wealth of knowledge it's a wealth of you know networking and conversation and like look back at Staten Island's history with like wu-tang and all the big names but you remember that cat amen of course, yeah. Had that jam back in the day. F you, I don't want yeah, you back. Yeah. yeah. Please tell me you have heard his recent music. Yo, his new stuff is fire, bro. He's cool. Dude, I actually have this right here. So I got big into vinyl. This is his album, Golden oh, Rail Motel. Sick. Dude, when I tell you this kid is criminally, criminally underrated, and it's insane that he's not top 10 right now being blasted all over the place that kid has soul his voice is matured in a way that's just incredible and beyond that he's an amazing dude amazing i've had a few conversations with him and humble gracious just such a really good dude man yeah it, it's crazy bro i remember i was going to school with someone that was dating him at that time when he had wow. like and it was like, it may have been about that person, you know, like, well, I can't say who, but I, I don't want to know. Yeah, but it was just crazy just knowing what was going on. And then all of a sudden we heard the record like year, like a year or two later. I'm like, oh, snap. And like, and, right. I, and I've heard some of the new stuff and he, he 
Yo, shout out to him. He's really he's really phenomenal, man. He's nice. he's a great dude. It's yeah. uh I fell onto his new stuff because one of his tracks was in that show, one of the last MTV Staten Island shows that came out. I forgot which one it was, but it was called Born and Raised, and it's got this hip hop flair to it. And his voice is super soulful and like just an incredible New York sound of a song. And then I started listening to his newer stuff, and I was like, oh, I, I couldn't believe that it was him. And then we actually used that song that was in that show for one of my fighter walkouts. Oh, sick. It was from Staten Island. He was super gracious about that. We, you know, we hit him up to make sure we could use it, and he was all on board, man. It was awesome. That's Amazing. sick, bro. Yeah, man. So, you know, I know you, you just, we've been talking about your music collection and different stuff, so maybe we could kind of just talk about, like, you know, maybe that versus battle where uh, a few weeks ago, you know, New York was in a major way. Um, box, set, set. Block. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So how'd that feel like with everything bringing back the hip hop to the new generation? Because I feel a lot of I felt like there, there's been a really good resurgence during the pandemic. I feel like we needed to hear real stuff and like a lot of the trap stuff kind of fizzled because no one was really at the club. Mm-hmm. And um, I, I just felt like it was such a moment for hip hop. So like, what did you think of that, that experience? For me, it's hard to gauge because that's the only real hip hop I listened to. You know, I've, I've, I think I stopped listening to modern or pop hip hop. I want to say around 2013, you know, just that I, I, I don't want to say I grew out of it. It doesn't sound right, but the music itself wasn't resonating with me. I, I couldn't, you know, connect with whatever the kids were saying. But I don't know. I don't know where hip hop is today uh, in relation to what hip hop was, because there always seemed like a through line. So by the time, like, let's say 50 Cent came out, there was there was a lore and a mythology to it where it was like, oh, Jam Master Jay gave him the nod or he was connected to Supreme, you know, the street dude. And you learned about these areas that you hadn't been to, they would take you on a journey through, you know, these neighborhoods and these different parts of the country and all that, and even the world. And I don't know what the connection of modern hip hop is to that. Like, do they have regional hip hop? I don't, I don't know, you know, where these artists are coming from. Are you you getting that same experience? Yeah, I I definitely hear you, man. Um, I always try to point out hip hop as, as like you know you're driving through the your state and you could pull over you could get some fast food it'll hit you quick it'll taste good maybe in the moment depending on who you are or you could pull over to granny's house or you could pull over to uncle like uncle jimmy's house or whatever and like sit or sit over the fire and like enjoy wait for something slowly cooked you know right and I, try, I try to look at hip hop or just music in general. I'm, you know, I'm probably like 80% of what I listen to is hip hop. Um, But I try to point out like hip hop like that. So it's like you're driving. It depends what you want to pull over and, and consume, you know, and right. we have, and we have any op- yeah, yeah. So I feel you though. And the, a lot of the stuff now, as you see, like vine, even though it's not here, but that was six seconds. Right. A lot of stuff is, quick consumption move on quick consumption move on quick consumption and it's like if, if it feels good in the moment it do it this you know and and i see through maybe a business lens like right okay cool the shoes fitting let's keep making more shoes like this and right um, if that's their attention span is that's fine but like think about something like joe rogan's podcast where imagine if you tried to sell that to a network where you're like okay listen we're gonna sit down have a talk show no commercials. Uh, we're going to talk about whatever. One day I'm going to have a comedian on. Next day I'm going to have a scientist on. Next day I'm just going to have an author on that nobody knows anything about. The network would be like, are you insane? There's absolutely no way. And now it's, you know, one of the biggest shows in the world. So it's, it's insane that a show that big got that big through a generation that's consuming six second, 30 second media. Yeah. Yeah. And so I think it, I, as you were pointing out, you know, it's it's definitely tricky to it's it's so hard to compare it, you know, and I'm a fan of Migos and Drake. And then I'm a fan of Talib and Mos Def. 
So it's a different thing. Yeah, yeah, and it's, it's entirely different vibes. And I love Travis. I've been to his concerts. Uh, you know, I would say Kid Cudi mm-hmm. is like he's kind of like the bridge between the old and new, but, but he's like this hybrid, unique, one of a kind kind of dude. You know, and yeah, but um, he's he's still an MC. He's and true, those, yeah. I I don't consider guys like that modern hip-hop but like when you go through like kendrick and uh j cole like i don't consider them modern hip-hop they 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 were kind of the tail end of what i would say was our generation but i'm so curious about modern hip-hop because i, didn't, I never realized how severely ignorant to the culture i am like if, if i had any critique on modern hip-hop whatsoever it is beyond uninformed like i am so far out of the loop and that's what uh that's what kind of sent me down the hole of thinking about the experiences we had as a kid where it it connected us to so much more it gave us so much more of a a perspective of the world it led us into other mediums it led us into older music it connected us to our parents like i just wrote a blog about this because i wanted to kind of streamline some of my ideas about it but like i remember you know rizza would take these old beats from motown songs and my mom would hear that and be like What's that, what you know what I mean? And that would be a conversation starter. And then I'm sitting here learning about older music and all of that. Like I feel like we had a different or a deeper appreciation for what came before. And I, I'm not saying that modern hip hop doesn't have that or fans don't have that, but I don't I don't know if they do. You know what I mean? Like I'm I'm completely lost to that. Do we have any Hall of Famers right now? Is I mean, do we have anyone that's 20 years old right now that's going to be in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? <laughs> Not 20. Uh, you know, I, I could definitely see Drake j- just basically off everything he's done. You know, he's going to be like, I was thinking about this. I'm like, when I'm a grandfather, Drake is going to be like the Saved by the Bell, Family Matters, you know, like Prince. You know what I mean? He's going to be like that to the younger generation because they literally grew up and they've had all these decades of memories with him. How Anyone's crazy who- is it? to hear 50 cent on old school at noon like <laughs> oh that was a shot to the heart yeah. like, oh no i'm actually old now that's it i'm old it's great but it's cool man like i think i think things happen in 20 year cycles too you know like because the, the people that were maybe 10 when the locks album came out they couldn't buy it they they may have downloaded it on Lime Wired, but now we're older and we're like, yo, I need to cop all these. I need to right. do this. And if, and like, as you see, vinyl is, is bigger than ever. Tapes are, are surging, you know, and the crave to just have something physical, I think is, it hit me hard too during the pandemic where I just, I got back into buying albums again. Like mm-hmm. I just wanted to have physical touch because I was so at out of touch and it was all like digital things and everything and um i'm a big cd buyer we grew up on music being tangible but like with vinyl having a resurgence is it kids that are buying the records i mean are you seeing 20 year olds is is that what's up is that where it's at yo you go to these comic shops and um the spots where they sell funko pops and all this bro and they got the vinyls like right next to it billy eilish like right next to sade that's dope yeah yeah so uh, it's cool because, you know, I feel like now the parents are 30s, 40s, and they grew yep. up on they grew up on 50. They grew up on Sade, you know, and now 50 has his own show. So there's like these bridges to the to like the generations and we're like the bridge, you know what I mean? And I think and these older cats that are doing it in a new way are, are bridging it, too. So it's cool. Um, there's always going to be that fast food stuff right pop is pop i mean it's 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 been around forever and it's uh i forgot i think it was the pop artist lord who had said something about like pop music is one of the hardest things to create because you're actually creating something that's so easily digestible to such a massive audience that that's such an unspoken talent and i never really thought about it until then i was like wow you know that's it's a huge move yeah man one of my favorite producers of all time max martin who's wrote you know i I could just go on and on but he basically raised the 90s babies on pop music you know and and up to the present making all the new weekend songs off his album that are hits ariana but all his stuff 
it was studied, it's all at a third grade reading level. All those hits, <laughs> that's, all that's those beyond hits. brilliant. Yeah. Look at look at the longevity of somebody like uh, Rick Rubin. I mean, he's still producing. He is still producing. He was one of the geniuses behind Def Jam. That guy's still pretty sure he did uh, a Johnny Cash album like in the 2000s. Nice. But see the way you referenced a producer now, our kids that versed in how deep that music goes. Because I heard RZA get asked by Donnell Rollins. He was like, you know, is hip-hop dead? And RZA said, absolutely not. It's, uh, you know, they had different ways of creating music where they had to sample tracks and loop things and this and that. These kids are literally creating something from nothing. And they could do it from their phone. You know, it's just stepped into a different evolution. It's, it's connected differently. Yeah. But now, does that take away from these kids that are listening to the music? Does that take away from their depth of knowledge or, or their their curiosity to look into other music and, and go deeper. Yeah, it, it's so weird, man. It's like, as we're all different, we love different foods. I think it's the same with music. Like my brother, like he, he was put on the biggie at like age four, five for me and Tupac and hearing cannabis and LL battles and, and stuff like that. And he's a digger. Like he, he, he's been about the mixtapes before streamings and stuff like that. And, but he, he doesn't buy an album. He doesn't buy anything, but he'll, he enjoys it in a different way. He goes to made in America. He goes to the whatever festival, you know, he, he's more of a concert. That's how he intakes it. He, he, he'll stream it, but that's almost like, it's like the Costco sampler. So <laughs> right. like, yo, I got to go see Travis now. I love this yeah. so much. And I, my friend Jerry, he's a college dude. You know, he he would always talk about St. John. And he, he hasn't bought his album, but he'll go, he'll buy the merch. He'll spend $80 on a shirt. Right, so support. They, yeah, yeah. So, like, I see a lot of the younger generation, they love, they love the merch. They love going to the shows and, like, really experiencing it that way which is the same way that I enjoyed going to Eminem and 50 and, uh, and um, Wu-Tang and the locks when I was twenties <laughs> and way too young to even be at shows like that. Like <laughs> when Eminem performed at the lane theater, like that, that was an all ages oh, show. Wow. Yeah. Insane. It was like 12 year olds. there. I wasn't allowed to go. I, I, <laughs> I was like at that age where it was like, mm-hmm. oh, come on, it's a teen. Yeah. But you're just 13. I was right. like, I'm still a teen. She's like, yeah, but next year. And I'm like, I don't know. And then next year he was in like, who he was running the world. Grammys. Grammy yeah. winning. Yes. So yeah, the younger generation, they, they love stuff. It's just maybe they hold it differently. And right. like, and my dad too, he loves music too. He's, he's a classical musician and but he doesn't really buy albums anymore. He'll listen to the radio. It's so weird um, how just people consume things. And um, but, but he buys sheet music. And, uh-huh. he, and he learns from like guys that have been passed and right. you know, long gone. But he, he's a musician. So that's how he'll support. And he'll like, he's a Broadway musician. So he'll buy the. Wow, I had no idea. Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. If you look up Barry Delman, um, he goes hard. And um, I got to check it out. Yeah, yeah. So he's not, he doesn't make his own beats and stuff, but he's classically trained. He could right. read anything. He, he plays four or five instruments at a live show. Yeah. He's in a trio and um, he could read. He, he's he's a, a retired music teacher. So he goes hard. So he doesn't buy music like me. I'm like the biggest music consumer of my family for sure. And I think I make up for everyone that doesn't buy albums. And <laughs> taking all the sales and <laughs> making up for, like you said. But he buy, but, but yeah, like my brother will go to the show. I'll buy the vinyl and tape. And my dad will buy like the written music to learn it, how to play it. That's insane how deep that goes culturally, where it's like there's so many different layers of nuance to music in general that it's like it's buying sheet music. Like that's literally the math. That's the the one plus one is two of yeah. the sound. Like that's it's so bizarre to even think about. But I worry about that with uh, you know the younger generation, where it's like for us growing up, 
if you had someone that was 10 years older than us, the connection to experiences were very, very similar. But our connection to a kid 10 years younger than us now is almost like a 50 year gap as far as experiences go, you know, like, like the experiences that are available to them. Yeah, so yeah. like, are they, are they, are they curious about, you know, what came before them as much as we were, you know, like, cause we grew up on eighties cartoons and eighties music and seven, you know what I mean? Like, do they, do they have that in them? Do they, cause I haven't seen it. One of my fighters, this is the, I, I wanted to pull the car over when he said this to me, he mentioned another one of the guys from our fight team was at a concert for some guy, Billy Joel. And I was, what do you, he was 21 at the time. Like, oh my God. Yeah. Like, how, how, you know, it's, so it's, are they missing that? It's interesting too, because people look at me too when they're like, my, my fiance all the time, like she'll say a, a rock song and it, it's, I'll be like, I think I know that. Right. But meanwhile, when I say that with a hip hop, I'll be like, oh, what, you know, the new St. John and whatever. Right. It's just uh, no, it, no. Concept. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, wait, so it's so weird how like we could be in a whole other spectrum. And, um, oh, it's, and I'm out of it. I'm out of it. I like I'll know a rock song, but I won't know too much about it. I won't know the history. I may I won't know what album it's on. But then there's people that are diehards and they know mm-hmm. every part of it. And everything has that. See. Every every type of like, there's someone who's into making wicker furniture that they have an entire lingo that words that wouldn't. It would be like speaking another language if you were I sat down with them. You know, it's, it's yeah. insane that how how deep that goes. As well, it's like I, I stopped watching sports when I uh, started painting. I stopped watching like baseball, football, and everything. I just didn't have the time. If the Yankees walked by me right now, I literally would not know one player at all. Like, I, I would just. It's crazy. I was nothing. saying, I literally said that the other day. And my, my lady's like, no, you know Aaron Judge. I was like, that's true. That's, I mm. do know him. Right. He's the only one that, that I know just because he was smacking home runs at, at some point when he had, like just started. And that's that's it. But if yeah. you, I couldn't point him out in a crowd. Couldn't do it. Yeah, yeah. It's it's crazy. It, you know, this we could kind of. There's all these little worlds, you know, like mm-hmm. like wrestling fans. You know, it's a, it's its own. They call it the WWE universe. So, same thing with comic books and any any direction you go. But yeah. how do we bridge that gap to the kids younger than us? Like, if they're uh, if, if they're not interested in what came before them, just you know, learning that generationally, whatever whatever it is that they're into, how do we bridge that gap? Like, if that curiosity is not there. You know, because I think it creates a divide, too, as well. Because even instinctually, when I started listening to, you know, some sample modern tracks, I was like, I was that guy. You know, I was that knucklehead. I was like, ah, oh, this is crap. This isn't what I grew up on. And I'm like, what am I doing? Like, I, I call myself. It's so how, do we, how do we do it? That's a good question, man. I, I think there's been some amazing artists that have, you know, like, I'm a big Kanye fan. And he's, I know he's king, king of sampling. You know, and Q-Tip, I know he was more of an early 90s where he mm-hmm. really, really thrived sampling like 60s, 60s 70s records. Um, there, There's these gap bridgers, bridge gappers or whatever, where, where like stuff like that happens. I think there's good websites like Genius where they really break down histories of stuff and there's youtubes where they talk about 90s and 80s and it's crazy like that's like throwback now 90s and um surreal but but there's so many there's so many platforms where people literally just can you know they'll help you can consume something quicker like they'll break down the tlc story and you can learn about everything they went through you know in 40 minutes and the there's a YouTube a channel, I think it's called like Honest. We mm-hmm. literally breaks down all stuff from so there there's just pockets, you know, and I think sometimes it could be I, I was thinking this several years ago when Drake did the song Wu Tang Forever. Right? And there was really no real Wu Tang reference, but I was like, yo, I think this is an I think this is a good moment that right. he's doing this because I know there's lots of kids that are probably thirteen, twelve. And this is the first time they're here. They're seeing those right, the three name words. Wu Tang forever. 
Yeah. I remember when that album came out, man. It, I was 10 years old when Wu-Tang Forever came out. And it was the first Wu-Tang song that I ever listened to by choice that I put the CD on, press play, reunited, track two, song one on that album. And I remember that feeling of just being completely blown away that it was one of the most cinematic sounding things I had ever heard in my life. That, uh, like yeah. Changed everything. Changed everything about the way I looked at music from that point on. Even the vocabulary they used, it was just... Uh, yeah. They were in their own lane. And I think that's big, like you said, that Drake, you know, kind of threw that out there and said, like, hey, go check this out. And I think it's even probably more impactful that he didn't have a Wu-Tang reference because now kids are going, what's that? Yeah. I think I, I think that it's good. There's certain moments where we're like, oh, man, this guy's becoming way too popular. Is he even hip hop? But people like Drake have done, even though they may be getting really blowing through the map in terms of popularity, he'll do things to help you reference. Right. Like some reggae stuff or he'll put a reggae dude on. And some people will be like, oh, he's using the culture. I try to look at it like. Yo, do you know how many people probably went to Jamaica because of mm -hmm. this track? Like, he's boosting economies of spots that he's getting no residuals on. You right. know, there's so many influential things that him, Yay, Cuddy, there's so that they've done or said that has just created markets. They've yeah. literally created entire economies, like you said, where it's just off one track. Yeah. So there's artists, I think, that do hold the responsibility. I was talking about this with someone earlier, like what's an artist's responsibility? And it's tricky, you know, because they want to entertain. They, they kind of figured out a formula that does work. Mm -hmm. But then it's like, what could they do? And I think when, they, when Drake would do a track called Wu-Tang Forever, I think that opened thousands of new kids. Oh, well, how many people listen to his album? You know, right, like, giving that exposure to something you know that that may have meant something serious to him and you know like these new kids are jumping in on it yeah and that data is too hard to figure out there's no way to populate no, yeah. who listened to that and figured it but i have a feeling there's right, you see the trends yeah yeah there's lots of instances and i saw a lot of shirts popping up that people maybe have not worn it shortly after that and i'm not saying he but he did have it. I'm sure he influenced some people. Right. There's, there's, there's an impact on him creating interest. Yeah. Yeah. Because they're like, oh, well, what is my favorite guy like? Oh, word. Boom. And then I, lo I love the Jordan Lucas song. He did the song Will, where he talks about Will Smith. I don't mm -hmm. know if you ever saw that. No, I never know. One of my favorite songs, probably in the last few years. He just does a whole song about Will Smith. Yeah. And how, like, every. He references, he does like 50 references from his movies to his song. And it's, and the video is just amazing. And then if you look at what happens next, it's even cooler. So just, if you look that oh, up. Did. No, no, spoiler alert. Don't tell me. I don't want to, I got to look that up. That yeah. Watch out. it on, watch it unfold. Cause it unfolds. And um, that's wild. But something like that. If you're a young artist, you're, tw you're not a, just a young person. You're 12. You watch this song will by joiner lucas because you heard him on the mm -hmm. eminem album or you heard him on the the logic album now all of a sudden he trickled over to you now you're a joiner fan you see this song will and us it hits me in so many ways but like as a young person if you check every reference you're like okay i'm gonna go watch independence day i'm gonna go watch this i'm gonna watch you on just got opened up to an entire world like you know you just had a whole door unlocked that was wasn't there before and it's that exposure is huge and you're right i think that's a it's an artist's responsibility and it's, remember back in the day though like the hip-hop heads that were so they're like i can't listen to 50 cent i only listen to necro and uh immortal technique and it's like dude necro and immortal technique like fleetwood mac i hate to tell you you know what i mean like it's yeah so that would go the other direction too where it's had those hip-hop heads or that's in every music yeah that's cool now because we could just access everything and it's just i think now we're embraced everyone has a pocket where they could be embraced you don't have to like chase what's popular right but there's so many po what's popular in all these little pockets and you could find your pocket you could be like an anime dude 
that loves lo-fi. You could be like an emo kid that, that loves Kid Cudi, but also, you know, goes to rock shows. You know, there's all these, I think the internet has opened us up to all these little pockets. So maybe it's hard to be as sentimental as we used to be because there's just so right. many options. Yeah, but that's but, one of the things I love seeing with these young kids is that because I was trying to look for their identity, you know, how it was like, okay, you could tell this rapper's from Houston back in the day, you could tell this rapper's from the Bay Area. But these kids now are so influenced by so many different things. And that I was like, oh, this is, this is an, a beauty that went completely unnoticed by me. I was uh, totally, I was like, oh, okay. So this is where the power of the internet and being exposed, the evolution happened. Where we were exposed to certain things, like they're exposed to everything. And then, and it shows. Yeah. I think things that used to be fray have the ability to be super popular. Like anything that would kind of be fringe you know, back in the day, like if you were a comic book nerd back in the day, you know, you, 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 you were like an outcast. You know, you were, you were one of the weird kids. Now it's, you know, everybody's into it. Yeah, it's it's so cool. I, I, I almost, I, I know this sounds crazy, but I like, I kind of wish I had the internet as a younger kid. I think I felt left out a lot as a kid. And like, I felt like maybe I could have found the pocket on on the internet that maybe i because i like most i was into different stuff i had a few friends but like the internet you can make friends in different places so of course it's a tool a tool could be used to ruin something or build something so maybe it was good that i avoided it at a younger age or it, it missed me but i'm like yo you know it could it could work in someone's favor too um but as of course we got to be mature and make decisions because we could go down different rabbit holes of stuff and more and spaces right. that could take us to a, a negative place too. Unfortunately, that's usually what gets the most uh, attention because that's always the loudest. You know, you're not hearing about like the kid that didn't have many friends finding, you know, an entire community out there who's across the world. Like I've met so many people, I have so many friends literally all over the world that I have ne never met face to face now because of the internet. You know what I mean? Like, I was just talking to an artist in the Philippines and like, I never would have had that as a kid. And it's, it's, it gives them so much more, like you said, than, than we had. It's a massive advantage, massive advantage, but I don't think it gets used enough correctly. I don't think it gets emphasized enough correctly. It's tough. Yeah. Cause a lot of crazy stuff's happening that really overshadows good things. And, you know, and there's also a lot of, there's also a lot of clicks that come to something that's bad over good. And so it, mm -hmm. people see, you know, people may figure that out as a formula and like, you know what, well, why do anything good? Let me just do silly stuff or let me just do right. clickbait related stuff. And so the that's the path of least uh, resistance. It's easier to go down the rabbit hole of nonsense. Yeah. And you, and it's tough because as a young kid, like now I could filter stuff out and it's still tough right. to, to see, you know, someone who's extremely successful and maybe I'm still trying to buy my first crib. Mm -hmm. It may hit me different, you know, it, or and a kid who maybe doesn't have anything and they see Travis Scott, even though they love him, it may make them feel a type of way if they see him with the hottest girl with the best kicks. And this kid right. can't even buy a pair of Converse, you know, like have, have the opposite impact. So it's tough. Like as a, as an adult, I'm still learning the filter and, filter my emotions when I see something and be like, okay, maybe you're getting a little jealous, bro. Like, all right, turn this off a little bit, you know, right. go, go hang with your, your parents or go catch your, your catch your ego. Yeah. Yeah. So, so as a young person, it, it, it I, I could imagine it being even harder. And, um, what, you know, I, what, when I ask young kids, what, uh, what type of content they can consume, you know, and they rattle off, oh, I'm on TikTok for X amount of hours and doing this and doing that. I say, would you pay money to listen to Albert Einstein speak for three hours? Or, or, I mean, what would you do to hear an unedited conversation Albert Einstein had? Oh, my God, that'd be amazing. It'd be phenomenal. There are thousands of hours of podcasts and audio books and just of minds that are literally 10 times more brilliant than Albert Einstein ever could have been at your disposal right here, just right on the cell phone. So that doesn't get promoted enough. You know, like, look, at, you know who Lex Friedman is? No. 
maniac of a genius. And he's another one of these guys where it's, he's this AI, you know, creator and he's a mathematician and, but he's also a jujitsu black belt. Like he oh, wow. couldn't be further ends of the spectrum as far as it goes, but the guy has his own podcast. You can listen to him talk about literally anything for thousands of hours. And that's like, if me and you went to college right now, we're not going to get a professor that good, but you can have that. You can have that right now. It's true. It's true. And I don't know. I forgot what artist says it, but we all got, we all got 24 hours. You know, I, I think Nas, we all hold the key or something. I think he said it on King's disease. Um, and it was just like, what are you going to do with those? You know, you, it's up to you to make these decisions and it is easy to get kind of caught up in the whole you know binging of anything right anything that you it's know easy to waste time yeah it's, it's yeah really easy to waste time i always uh i always tell that to artists that are coming up because i really i the amount of failure that i have experienced is absurd the amount of try fail get back up has given me you know miles of experience and any success that i'm lacking is 100 percent due to my own my own fault but now i realize i'm in a position to be able to give artists young artists direction and guidance that, that i didn't have so i'll tell them too like you have the same 24 hours as everybody else does if someone's doing something that you want to do you can they they don't have you know a time machine they don't have extra time in the day so it's how many hours did you watch football for on Sunday? Oh, man, I watched every game, you know, nine hours I was sitting there. Someone who wants to do what you're doing spent all of that time with a pen in their hand grinding. Yep. It's not just going to happen. It is not just going to happen. So it's that yeah. time management. It's oh, so I true. I don't have time. I don't, I, <laughs> that's one thing I can't. I'm busy. I don't have time. Mm -mm. I can't. I can't. That's one excuse I can't accept. I can't uh, swallow that one. No, it's true. If you don't have time, you don't want it more. You know, you don't want it enough. If it, if it matters, you got to make the time for it. And, exactly. Because uh, someone is putting that grind in. Someone's doing all the work, and they're not going to succeed either. They might not, but they're doing the work to actually make it happen and get where you want to go. You can't just sit by. You can't do it. Yeah, bro. I was literally just talking to my friend today, and he's been making music since, or playing music since he was six. He's thirty-seven, and now he's on. He's in the live band of Twenty One Pilots. That's. And he literally said, "Bro, like I haven't. I chose to just do music, no matter what. I if 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 it was the difference of me start not eating much or eating." It didn't matter. I just did music all the time. I got as good with three instruments as I did on my first. That way, the, everything all evened out. And, bro, here he is now performing. That's incredible. 21 Pilots. That's and he incredible. Knows, he knows he's like, in January, I'm going to be in Moscow with them. And it's like he already knows his whole year for next year, you know, God willing. And um, he he's super he loves. blessed. And he's like, he's like, and he just – you know, shout out to Jesse Bloom. He was just, he's on the new Nas album. He produced songs with Hit Boy. And like, he's real. And he's like, you know what? Like, now that I'm getting these opportunities, I want to get even better. And he's like, you know, we see all these finished products, but it's exactly. like, exactly. There's so much that goes into that finished product. And make sure, you know, anyone out there with the dream. It's not about just put, the finished product is the finished product, but what have you done that led up to that? Right. Because every, every single person on this planet has a dream. They all have that. Oh, I want to be an actor. I want to be in movies. I want to make music. I want to do this and that. It's, I tell all these young artists too, nobody is anybody till they're somebody. You don't see those. You don't see that journey. I mean, now you have the access to it, social media, which is dope. Like there's, such a niche market but like there's a, a knife creator that i followed from the time he was literally doing it in his garage to the point now where he is a massive you know i mean he's sponsoring one of my fighters like shout out to half base blades the guy's an ex-navy seal he's phenomenal but i got to see that journey you know we didn't get that but i think kids are missing that a lot too where it's you know 
oh, I want this, I want this. You got to do it. You, know, you got to get out there. You, yeah, I've had a few younger cats. I was talking to them. I, you know, they were like, oh, I want to start a business. All I got to do is put this money in, and then it'll just start flowing. I'm like, oh. you know, are you? Who's going to be out selling? Who's going to be out promoting? Who's doing the social media? Who's taking the photos? It's not you buying a bunch of equipment and then all of a sudden people are ringing your doorbell because you have these, these big bubble things that people could dance in or whatever, right. you know, and you, there's now work that is required to end learning curves and com- dealing with competitors and people that will outbeat you in price and quality. And being willing to fail. You yeah. have to be, you have to be willing to fail. You have to check your ego and, where humility comes from too because it's like if the greater good or your goal isn't bigger than your immediate ambition or you know that that quick fix it's not gonna happen you can't do it that's that's where the humility comes from yeah yeah it's got to be a long game where you're you're not looking at like oh well it's not fast food (laughs) or you know what we're doing when we have a dream it's it's literally imagine cooking a meal for 15 years mm-hmm. and finally eating after 15 years but even could fast you food do that? no no could someone, could someone do that like it's hard to eat shit for 15 years mm-hmm. but then you're gonna if you're just if you just keep going you're gonna figure something out you're gonna right, you, you're to gonna screw up enough work. times until you know how to do it. And every time that you don't do it right, at least you can pass that on to somebody else and say, hey, definitely don't, you know, you're going to make your own mistakes. I can keep you from making mine. You know, that, that gives you a leg up, gives you an advantage. I mean, I, I think that's kind of become my superpower at this point is being able to, I've screwed up so many times that now I could tell kids, don't do this, 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 and this. That's the way to go. That's the direction. It's true. It's true. There, there's been so, a lot of experiences I've had, man, that I was like, oh, man, this was the worst. I wish I didn't have to deal with that. But then it's like there's so much that I'm doing now because of that or things I'm not doing or things I'm doing different. Right. It opens I was up so like, many doors. All right, cool. I'm not going to do 50 events a year if, you know, if someone's going to sue me at this one or something like this is going <laughs> right. to happen this way. I'm like, all right, cool. I'm going to just lock myself in the house and do as much work as possible. And let's see what happens. And the pandemic, I'm, I'm grateful that I was in good health during it and um, was able to just lock in and seeing a lot of fruits of my labor. And um, it's kind of been a blessing in disguise. Is, you know, people that did use it to capitalize on really, you know, honing and sharpening their skills. Is, that's yeah. uh like I said, been a blessing in disguise. It really has. Yeah. If you're out there, you know, focus on that building the house, not taking a photo in front of it, you know, right. and if, if you just laced groundwork and the, the wood and the foundation and day by day, you're not going to build it in one day, but you'll right. see. And if you start now and if you go, okay, 10 years and I'm not, and I don't tell anyone, you know, my friend Jesse, he was able to do it. He's with 21. That was his own path. Like right. he may have taken that spot, but there's so many other spots for there's so many other dreams out there. And if you just don't stop dreaming, you're going to figure, you're going to figure it out. You're going to figure something out that be like, Oh shit. Okay. Maybe, maybe I'm not the best with the guitar, but Oh wow. I'm really good with the lighting you know you were at the event you figured it out and then all of a sudden you got caught up in it and now all of a sudden you're like a lighting director at some broadway show you know and it's like from you hitting your head on the wall from dreaming this way Mm -hmm. you sometimes learn that maybe that dream wasn't the exact way you imagined it but you're still dreaming and you're still finding a way to live a dream and it my dreams have changed I'm, i'm no longer the person that wanted to rap I'm enjoying being behind the scenes and people not knowing right. where, where that came from, but knowing that I had my hand in it and um, it's, it's just interesting. It's, it's uh... Look at someone like Mark Echo. When was the last time you saw that guy publicly, but that guy started designing t-shirts that, you know, off money he got from his sister 
and now he owns Complex, which has turned into First We Feast, which has turned into Hot Ones. Like, you could trace a path from Sean Evans and Hot Ones back to Mark Echo's graffiti t-shirts. It's crazy. Because his dream changed a million times. And that was, uh, I don't think artists talk about that enough, too, is, like, that was one of my biggest heartbreaks was I got too popular too quick with painting. I got way too much success way too early on. And my, uh, even knowing the trappings of ego, my work suffered severely. Like uh, you see the drastic dip and how bad my, my art got after I kind of started getting that, uh, little bit of notoriety. It wasn't much, you know, relatively, but when I couldn't paint anymore, when I lost that love, when I lost that passion, it took me five years just to say, I'm a different person now. And that's, that's okay. That's okay. That that's in the past. Like, that legitimately broke my heart. That was probably bigger of a heartbreak than most of the severe, you know, relationship stuff or death in the family. Like that was a heartbreak, and, and I had to mourn that as bad as you know anything else. Yeah, it sucked. You know, but artists don't talk about that enough either. Like it was so attached to who my identity was. I, but I did that to myself. You know, I, I made it like I'm this artist. I'm this artist, and I didn't allow myself to say I'm going to do something else. And that transitioned into writing or managing MMA fighters. And all the knowledge I got from that experience informed so much of what I'm doing now, which is, like you said, behind the scenes. And it happens. Yeah. And it's it's crazy because in that moment, it's hard to really pinpoint, like, oh, this is going to be the moment that shows me. You're like, nah, this sucks. Like, oh, I don't want to deal with <laughs> yeah. this. Why is this happening? Like, I thought this was meant to be. But then you look back, it's so hard to pinpoint it in the moment and find peace in it. it you no, know, you I'm can't. talking about stuff in the past. You can't. It's, hindsight's in the moment, 20 I was fucked up. Oh, I yeah. was messed up off it. And I'm like uh-huh. trying to understand because when things don't go right, I'm like, I don't know why this didn't go right. And you're just questioning. But then, then you look back and you're like, wow, that that had to happen. Mm-hmm. Okay. My and, first gallery I ever had was in Williamsburg. And... I had 19 paintings on the walls. All my work, that was it. Promoted the hell out of it. It was a big party. There was drinking, music, all that. No one showed up but some of my closest friends, my family. And I was devastated. I was embarrassed beyond belief. And I was like, all right, that's it. I'm I'm done painting. But I had a party again the next week. I said, no, no, I got got to do it. And, you know, thank God I had the the sense in the moment to say, no, I'm going to keep pushing. But there was plenty of times where I took a hit and I was just like, I'm going to go crawl in a hole for, uh, for a year. And those, those moments hurt, man. Like you said, you don't see it. You don't see it in that moment. It's hard. It's hard to find that peace. It's hard to find that lesson. Yeah. Which that's, a, that's, that's a skill that you learn, too. You, know, you get, get better at it if you hone it. It's true. Yeah, and you were talking about just experience and just, you know, you could sit down – and listen to like a podcast but like i always recommend and i i highly recommend anyone consuming quality content right but then i always tell everyone like just start even if it costs you 100 bucks maybe you don't have a store on fifth ave make five shirts right give them out print out 10 mixtapes you know engrave a little knife you know with the initials of your neighbor because they like that stuff just start because you're going to figure things out as you go and sometimes i see dreams that are just so 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 big they're too hard to even they're like they're like level 50 year 10 goals right that can't be your first goal the goal should just be to start find a way to just grassroots you know um one foot in front of the other yeah yeah they say oh you Right. So you can't can't run before you can crawl. You have to. You have to crawl first. And it's like you said, just start. Just yeah. even if you if you want to be a writer, sit down today, write for ten minutes. Sit down tomorrow, write for ten minutes. Just start there. Yeah. Because if you didn't do that today, you're not gonna become a writer. You're not a writer. I I agree. I, I get so frustrated when my, my friends my mom's friends kids will be like oh you know I'm, I'm going now to get my master's in screenplay writing and i'm like 
I was like, yo, you should just go to freaking like Phoenix, Arizona, take some mushrooms in a forest and experience something for like $400 instead of nine ninety thousand. Like go have Google, an experience and then Google take that a script. Yeah. Uh, it's it, it, there's so many, like I had to deal with that with, uh, with managing. Dude, I'm a high school dropout. I dropped out my senior year of high school and became an MMA manager where I'm sitting here dealing with massive companies and sponsorships and I'm learning legal language and I'm doing contracts and all this stuff. And then I had a friend of mine that went to school for sports management. He's like, Hey, uh, if you ever need any help, you know, let me know. I'm like, dude, you're doing the complete opposite of what you set out to do right now. And I fell into it because of the skills that I learned. It's like, like you said, you don't need to always make that severe of an investment, like going to college or, you know, it's half that stuff is obsolete by the time you're out anyway. Look at if you went to school for marketing, everything you learned is completely obsolete by the time you, you get out. But what if you started a lemonade stand with fifty dollars and you knocked on every door in your neighborhood? You would have learned more talking to a hundred different people from forty different cultures and twenty different countries. Right. And, and any maybe professor. hearing yeah, or and hearing ninety nine no's and still going then you probably would have learned. And I, you know, and I don't shit on school. I, I highly recommend, no. you know, you need to be a nurse. You need to be a doctor. You, you maybe you need to stay out of trouble. I highly recommend it, but don't use it to distract. Right. It's doing something. Go we're right. Const- we're constantly looking to get online and be told what to do. And that, that kind of becomes an extension of that where it's like, I went to high school want to do this in my life. I'm going to go to college for that, which like you said, I'm not knocking on it because I think you should do it. I think it's, it's a great experience, especially socially and like, you know, culturally you get around so many different things. You get to explore ideas, but it's not the only avenue. If you're not willing to say, I'm going to get off the path and look around and see what's going on over here. You're, you're not going to get there. It's very, very rare. It's very rare. How many kids did we grow up with that went to college that wound up doing something virtually different than they ever set out to do or went yeah. to school for? Yeah, get, I, I've been saying this a lot lately, get used, you know, start getting used to enjoying swimming in the mud. Mm-hmm. Swim in the mud, but enjoy it. Right. You know, and we could, I'm grateful I went to school and I, I met some good people and I made my parents proud or whatever. And it, I'm sure it kept me out of mad trouble. Hell yeah. That's the other thing me. too. And I, I'm grateful I have no debt. I didn't want to go to anything that was beyond my parents' budget. And I'm grateful my grandma did hook me up. I am Mm -hmm. privileged in that way. So it gave me a leg up for sure. But like. But you utilized it. You utilized what it had for you. You utilized every aspect of it. Because like you got those cultural experiences. You got to meet awesome people. But it's crazy, bro. Selling cookware and meeting people from Nigeria and Guyana. Wait, that that was that was your your foot in kind of? No, no, I'm saying doing that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And going to like Connecticut a 10 hour day and making zero dollars because I didn't make a sale. I learned more doing that than I did in college. Because you have to figure it out. You have to. Yeah, but I I think that's that's got to be universal. It's like anytime you have to figure something out for yourself, you learn a thousand times more, even if you're. Even if your lights go out and like you're trying to fix a switch in your house and you're trying to figure it out, like you you get so much more out of that than you know if, if you were taught how to do something like that. It's it's the experience. You cannot put a price on experience. It's invaluable. Just meeting people from different cultures, taking L's, making three G's in a day, or making zero in four months or even six months taught me so many things and like thickened my skin to a point where like now if i don't sell merch in a day i I know that my work ethic is going to circle back and then there's going to be good days so i don't it it, it's crazy and i'm grateful for school it was a great experience and it did keep me out of trouble but actually going out and taking l's and like trying and figuring out sales techniques and doing that for like six years and meeting people from all different walks Selling. You, you could have been Mark Cuban's protege and you wouldn't have learned 
as much as you did, you know, just on that grassroots, knocking yeah. on doors. It's and, true. Go out. I tell anyone, if you if you're not doing your job now, like the thing that you want to do, just hit up, make make it your job. If you have free time and if this is what you want to do, you should find the time. Hit up people all day telling them that you do this If until you have enough people willing to give you a shot. But then when they do, be willing to do it all for free and do the best job possible that they will all say you, you are awesome. Dude, that, was, that was a huge part of me getting good at managing was I, I had to send out a billion emails that made me feel like I felt so scuzzy doing it where I'm like, I'm faking it till I make it. That's literally what I did. Hey, I'm a manager of so-and-so blah, 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 changing the way that I spoke. And it, it's the only, you, people start believing it, you know? And the next thing you know, it's like, Oh, I am that guy. I'm doing that. But you're not, you're, you're not going to get there without doing it. Yeah. Possible. You, you were swimming in the mud, man. Uh, and, embracing the suck yeah and it's there's so much more to that there's so much that leads up to that photoshopped photo that we post you know and or that ha or that key that we hold that say yo i got the new crib imagine w how many hours someone had to work to ha to take that one photo right non-stop that process and everyone i talk to that has any level of success always talks about the early days. Like there's nothing more fun than that. It's you can go on a roller coaster, right? They're built for fun. They're amazing. You never remember a roller coaster. You never sit around with your friends and tell a story about, Oh, remember that time we went to six flags and the thing went up and then down. Like you're not getting it's everyone loves that suck, the grind, the hustle where you took the L's and you were out there. Like that's the most fun part of it. So it's yeah. like, get, don't just be scared of taking the L. It's like, I promise you, that is the most enjoyment you will get far beyond even the success that you want. Because there's no finish line. Did you get to whatever finish line you think you have in your head, you're not going to be happy. You're not. It's, it's, it's all in the journey. It's all in that one step in front of the other, and that's where it is. That's, that's where you're going to find the happiness of it. Yeah. It's, it's real talk, man. It's... Uh... It's cool. It's just cool talking to you and, you know, really uh, trying to pinpoint different emotions about the grind and music and new and old school generations and how everything connects. And um, yeah, man, it's crazy. Time just really flies. Um, it just I feel like we could probably do this every week. Um, Hell yeah. <laughs> but that so for anyone that wants to learn more about um like if they need someone or know an artist, so you're you've been mostly managing like uh, fighters. You said, yeah. Where could they find uh, uh, you and all that stuff? Hit me up for any reason, any help, anything, any guidance you need on uh, Instagram at John underscore Siri thirteen. Any questions you have about any type of creative process, I am more than willing to help you out where I can. And if I can't, I will tell you straight up. I'm not going to be a snake oil salesman. But I would love to help as many people as I can in general. Yeah, I'll pull it up real quick for anyone. Oh, wait. Hold on. Uh, just spell that for me real quick. At John underscore Siri 13. S-E-E-R-Y. Oh, 13. Underscore 13. Yeah. No, no, underscore Siri 13. John underscore Siri 13. Gotcha. Got it. I'll pull it up for anyone who's on the video side of things. So yeah, connect with my guy right here. Thank you, brother. Oh, this is fire right here. Yeah, it's some of the uh, recent digital stuff I've been doing. So yeah, make sure to connect with my guy. And if you're listening on the, that's J-O-H-N underscore S-E-E-R-Y one three. Hit him, hey, on, hit him on the IG. Thank you so much for having me on, man. I appreciate it. I really do. Love chopping it up with you. Yeah, man. I 
you know, it was dope. You posted something on F, uh, Facebook and it started a convo. I was like, yo, we need to go a little bit deeper into it. And we really did. And um, exactly. That was that was that uh, one foot in front of the other, man. That was just doing it. <laughs> yeah, man. So here we are. And um, yeah, man, you're always welcome back. Thank you, brother. And, uh, Anytime you want. Yeah. When we're back in the studio, we'll definitely do another one. And, yes, uh, that's I definitely look forward to that. I would love to be in the studio. That'd be awesome. Yeah, because I know we were talking about like, you know, being personal and really connecting with things. And I know we couldn't have done, couldn't have been in the studio this time, but definitely uh, futures. And uh, yeah, man. So for anyone out there, once again, make sure to connect with my guy, see all the great work and all the fighters he's helping and the art he's creating and, you, you know, really out there living his dreams. Thank you, bud. Do my best. <laughs> Everyone out there, you know, make sure to subscribe on Spotify, Apple, iTunes. Of course, we're live every other Wednesday on Make a Park Radio. And uh, we got a great event coming up October 9th. It's called Where I'm From. All you got to do is come out, share a story about Staten Island, either why you love it, how you found yourself here. Um, Share a story and you get an exclusive merch that day. Um, why, why supplies last? We're giving away over a hundred something shirts for the day with designs by Kerry Sheehan, uh, Chris Robots Will Kill, Sharpie, and then Stereotype Co. So uh, just a day, just wanted to give back. It's our first event after a long time of being locked in. And uh, we wanted to just show love to the community. And um, shout out to the City Artist Corps for making it possible and uh, yeah so come out october 9th one to five o'clock i hope to see you bro come out um we'll oh, make sounds you, phenomenal we'll make i'll be there shirt. bro i will I'm be a, there yeah yeah so i'm gonna pull up that real quick for anyone who's on the video side of things it's gonna be a great event i'm really excited let's see what this is and then we got one other one in the works uh I, i'll definitely be letting people know about that when it comes but here it is october 9th hub 17 right in Staten island and for more info you could just go right to the website and um hope to see everyone there so yeah, yeah. bro you always got my support i look forward to seeing dave likewise thank up. you and uh enjoy your night my dude appreciate you having me on and everyone out there remember don't stop dreaming Enjoy your evening. Peace.